Hello and welcome to a new video. So today, I, I was searching for new planner builds to see what uh, new features were integrated lately and I came across this amazing build here and I just play this animation and as you can see it is amazing <laughs> what it can do because these are real life, uh, real time life physics in viewport and you also have things like force fields and really good collisions and materials, friction, bounciness, all that stuff. So it really is amazing. Uh, I'll just show you very quick where, uh, where I got that from. So on Graphigol, oops, Graphigol, yeah, search for Google Sum of Code and I'm sure that when, when you look in here there, there will be newer builds maybe this video will be outdated very soon but anyways I found it here so this is the Mac version and this uh, the Windows version yeah bullet integration branch that's what it is called I think uh, yeah install that install it and right okay let's start up a new scene and see what we can do so first of all let's add a cube and let's make this the ground plane um, yeah scale that up by 10 and I just scale it along the axis so we have something like plane and yeah right now we have our first um, problem already here so as you can see here in the dimensions and scale values you can see that um, it is not a cube anymore but the scale is not uh, one you know just okay I'll just tell what you have to do just hit control A and apply the scale so all these scale values are back to one and just as if you would have scaled it in edit mode that's more important if you want if you don't do that um, the collision bounds will be off. Also, if you change the object in edit mode, what you should always do, like this, always make sure that before you simulate it, you set the origin to the geometry. You can do that by using the shortcut Control uh, Alt Shift C. And yeah, then origin to geometry, and there you go. Now this plane is um, good for now. And now let's create our physic objects. Let's do spheres and monkey heads. <laughs> okay. So let's just do a few copies here. Um, I'm not applying any physics for now on purpose so that I can show you later on how to uh, copy these physics settings to other objects. Okay, so here we have a bunch of spheres and now let's also do some monkey heads. On this side, yeah, something like this. <coughs> Let's just make sure that they don't intersect with each other. Just let's just make a few of them here. Doesn't really matter. Okay, and and also we want to have different materials on monkeys and spheres so that for example these should be more bouncy have more bounces and stuff but yeah let, let's just start right away with setting things up okay now first of all let's see what we can do to the ground plane all the um, we can add the, uh, the tools the physics tools here in this tool um, bar whatever it is called <laughs> and just add that passive Thing here and it will make it a, a collider kind of. Okay, so this is a collider and we can also change the shape here but also go here to the physics settings and change it later on and for this object I want uh, a box collider and as you can see already we have here our friction bouncing settings but we'll get into this later on and then for let's say we want to make these spheres now. Select one sphere and start by adding an active um, the active toolstead and then 
change the collision bounds, you could use um, the mesh collision uh, mesh bounds or, or things like that. But for for sphere uh, for sphere, I'm just going to use the sphere collisions because they work the best for it. As you can see, when you hit Alt A, it starts already working. So as you can see, in just the first few frames, it moves a little bit, <laughs> but it works. Okay, now let's select all the spheres and make sure that this one is the active object so it's slightly brighter selected than the other ones just right click on an object that makes it active object and then you can just hit here copy from active and now all of them have the same physics settings and even if you can't really see it I'm just going to move the plane down a bit Alt A and it works okay now for now let's leave it like that and let's have a look at, at these markers now. Again, select one of them, add an add the active uh, object tools here. <coughs> but this time we'll need uh, mesh collisions. Um, right. Yeah, and also, um, what I almost forgot to do, select all of the objects and apply the scale. Because as you can see right now, it, it jumps off and it floats in the air and here also even if there is nothing exactly so I apply a scale and why is it not working let's see oh it is it just didn't update on the on first try okay but as you can see it works now yeah pretty cool okay now again select all the the monkeys and make it the active object this one here and copy from active. Oh, what happened? <laughs> yeah, make sure to be in the first frame. I think that was a, a problem. Yeah, but copy it from the active one, and as you can see, all of them are falling down, and it's still almost real time. Okay, and now let's try. Let's start with rotating the ground plane to see what happens. As you can see the physics work in an instant in real time. <laughs> and it's just amazing what happens here. Okay and now also you can change the friction of objects. Now let's have a look only at, at this monkey here. When bo both of the objects have no friction at all, this object just um, goes down without any rotations. But if you make the friction one at both of them or just high values, you can see it almost sticks at the plane and it starts rolling down and so you can really see how much uh, more friction there is. It's really cool. So uh, what you can also do is uh, add bounciness to objects, what I think wasn't really possible earlier with the game physics, but I'm not totally sure about that. But yeah, let's add some bounciness. Just mm, yeah, and as you can see, this monkey starts bouncing. <laughs> yeah, that's also a pretty cool thing. Now, as the next thing, I want to show you how to use the um, force fields. Let's just reset the bounciness. Okay, and what you have to keep in mind with, with force field is that in, for now it works only with um, mesh force fields, so it has to the force field has to base on a mesh. So let's add, let's start with the torus. Okay. And yeah, add an effector to it. And after you, you hit that you can add a force field. Uh, actually it works already, it's just the effect is really s s um, small, so let's make it for example minus, uh, minus 200 and as you can see all of these objects are starting to <laughs> get up here, it's a really cool effect I think yeah, you can make it stronger oh, that wasn't stronger yeah, as you can see they really start getting also, you can um, make a copy of the force field object and remove the force field from it and change it to a passive object. 
and adding constraint to it, uh, copy transformation constraint to the tor torus, to the first object. So if you move that, if you transform it in any ways that um, that force field object, this collision object moves to it. And right now, so we did that so that we have collisions here. And as you can see, all of these objects are starting to go around, and this one even st started behaving like a planet. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool, I think. And also, you can um, animate it. You can't, um, for now, you can't do that uh, while you're simulating, but still, you can add a keyframe to it and then move around and add another keyframe at another time, and it works. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Oh, and also, um, I don't know, nothing. Never mind. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching it. Uh, yeah, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.